One of the things that inevitably happens when you start creating material is you can end up with a lot of parameters. And if we've got three already, and we're gonna probably add a few more, and then we're gonna add five different material layers, the parameter creep is gonna become kind of intense, right? So what I wanna do is if I can live with this configuration, I'm just gonna hard code these values in. And if I want, I can always come back in and simplify this a little bit. But if I know that I like 175 and 150 and 200, then I can just figure out what I need to multiply by 150 to get 175 and 200. So let's just grab the calculator real quick. So I'll do 175 divided by 150. Uh, give us 1.16. So I'm just going to add a multiply node. We'll say 1.16. We're going to multiply 150 times that, and then we'll pipe this in over here and we can delete that. And then we'll do the same thing for two, or I think it was 100 actually, if I remember correctly. So we'll do 100 divided by 150. That is going to equal 0.66. So we'll just add another multiply, hold the M key, and we'll say 0 0.66, grab 150, go ahead and save it. And we should see very little change up there. But if we hop over here, now we've just got one tiling value. And as we multiply it, it's gonna be tweaking all of those other values as well. So hopefully this will keep things a little bit more simple. And as we add more material layers and more parameters, we don't have to worry about a whole bunch of extra stuff getting in the way. Let's go ahead and take a look at our normal map. Just gonna to navigate to where this thing is. There's a normal map and we can drag it in. So once again, we're gonna need two of these. And we're gonna do the same exact thing here. We'll grab these UVs for our second texture sample and these UVs for our first one. I'm gonna add a lerp. Plug in there. For the mask, we're gonna use the same mask and I'm gonna plug this into our normal. But because we've rotated this texture, the way a normal map works, if you are not familiar, if I just go to the red channel, I can't turn off blue, but you can see we've got lighting that goes from left to right. And in the green channel, it's going up and down. So the, the video card is expecting that data out of the normal map. So if we don't correct that, it's gonna render in a very peculiar way. So it's a simple fix though. We just need to swizzle these two things here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an append many node, and we're gonna take red, plug it into green and green, plug it into red, and then blue will just pass through unmodified. And then we wanna pull off from the RGB. So by doing this, we're gonna correct any weird rendering errors that we might've otherwise encountered with our normal map. Let's take a look once the shaders are done. So now we have a little bit of lighting information. Let's drop our player down. Obviously it's a little bit too big. I'm gonna hit Alt tab and then we can just go to our tiling demo and play with these values. Increase them a little bit, right? Whatever. We don't want to get too small because then some of the detail might disappear, but whatever, we like 169, that's fine. And you can see now we're, we're getting some of that lighting information from the normal map, which is very nice. We're going to punch us up even further once we add displacement, but we're not going to do that right away. For now, we're going to take a look at the final texture We'll hop back over here. Looks like we were already there. So we have this height map and we have our ORM. So if we look at the ORM, once again, I mentioned this in an earlier video. So the red channel here is gonna be occlusion. So that's the O. The green channel is gonna be roughness. This data is very, very important. And the blue channel in this case has nothing in it because what ORM stands for is occlusion, roughness, metalness. This is dirt, there's no metal. Normally, well, not normally, but in many cases, this will actually say ORD. And that's really nice because it means they've taken the height, converted it to displacement and piped it into that extra channel that we're not using here in this texture. There's a couple things that we need to do here. The first one is gonna be convert the compression settings from displacement to, I think masks works pretty well. So this is gonna give us our displacement. Go ahead and save that. And now we need to create another texture graph. I don't remember where we put the other one, maybe over here in demo. Yeah. So we may as well just keep all the stuff in one place. 
I'm going to go to texture, texture graph, and if you don't see texture graph in there, there's a plugin that you'll need to enable. I covered it a little bit earlier, so I'm not going to get into the details there. But let's just go ahead and uh, we'll just call this one ORM to ORD. Save it. Open it up. So we're going to have, let's go back to where these textures lived. Scoot it up a little bit. And we have one texture and we have another texture. And there's our output. So we looked at this earlier. There is a node called combine channels. And what we want to do, I bet there's a split channels. Look at that. Is we want to grab the red, which is our occlusion and the green, which is our roughness from our input ORM map. And we want to pipe in our modified H map for our final displacement. So now if we come over here we can turn off a, so there's our occlusion, our roughness, and in the blue channel, we have displacement. So let's go ahead and put this over into output. So for this, there's probably some fancier stuff that we could do where, you know, we don't have to necessarily modify the path manually, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and, and set the save path and the, and the save name to something that I just manually pipe in. So we're going to call this one. I'm just going to copy this. We'll call this ORD for displacement. And we're going to save it in the same location that we currently are in, which is not this folder. That's where the texture graph is saved. So I'm just going to copy everything up to game and replace this path. Let me add a forward slash there just in case he gets confused and we'll just hit export. And here is our beautiful ORD ready for use in our material. Setting up the displacement is going to take a little bit of extra time. We'll look at that in the next video. I'm going to grab this ORD though, drop it in, and we can go ahead and set this one up. We are going to need two of these, just like before. So I'll just do a control C and a control V. We'll grab our UVs getting a little hard to see here, but hopefully you can follow. And then uh, this one, we will pipe in like that. So we're grabbing our rotated UVs here and we're, we're feeding these into the second sample and using the, the non-rotated UVs up here. So now we're going to need a lerp for each channel because the data needs to come out into different inputs on our make material attributes node up here. So we'll grab the red and the red and the, you know what? There's probably a better way to do this. We'll just do a regular lerp and then I can split it on the other side. So there and there, and we'll go find our mask, which is coming out of here plug that in like so, my mistake, there. It gets a little bit hairy. And one of the things that we're going to do here, probably in the, uh, maybe the next video is we're going to convert this into a material function that just has a few inputs and then all the stuff will be obscured under the hood. And we're not going to have to look at this in our larger material graph on the actual layered landscape material. So maybe split components. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm just going to kind of scoot this up here so it's a bit easier to see what's going on. And we're going to pipe the R into ambient occlusion, the G into roughness, and then we'll get to displacement here fairly soon. But for now, I'll just go ahead and save it. And here is the final result with the correct roughness and AO piped in.
So we went from a very, very tiley texture to something that if you look further out, you can definitely see some tiling, but up close, it's working really nicely. Okay, and the next one, we're gonna convert all of this stuff into a nice, easy material function, and then we're going to set up displacement on this material. It's gonna be awesome.